My guest today broke onto the scene after winning the Peak Talent Show in 2009. In 2014, she gave us the smash music video and song, Johnny. Since then, it's been up, up and away. She's now releasing her fourth studio album, Woman of Steel, none other than Yemi Alade, who is a woman of steel. It is so good to have you on the show. Welcome to The Juice. Merci beaucoup. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. You just released your fourth studio album. Yes. Women of Steel. Yes, yes, yes. I want to like go back to like peak talent show. Because mm -hmm. I remember when you broke onto the scene, between 2009 and 2014, you released 10 songs. Yes. But it wasn't until Johnny that everyone really, really knew who you were. Pretty much the journey from um, the journey that I experienced during the period I released the 10 songs that I could remember because yeah. I was still releasing other things. But 10 songs were like the, the 10 songs I referred to are the songs that were like proper official singles, yeah. you know. Yeah. That period, a lot was happening, and I, I think I was getting some kind of prominence in Lagos. Mm -hmm. You know, just trickles of fans here and there, nothing too major. Yeah. Still hitting like a thousand or five thousand views on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then Johnny happened. Mm. What know? was it about Johnny, do you think, that was different from all the other songs you had released? <sighs> first of all, Johnny was like the first um, song I had recorded in that genre of mm. high life. Oh, I got you. Even though my mom is a huge High Life fan and my dad is a huge juju music kind of guy, mm. but I was more into my R&B and soul yeah, and stuff, yeah. and I was still trying to rope that into my Afro beat. Yeah. Like, Johnny was something I never saw coming. I never thought one day that I would majorly be an artist that's, you know, about High Life. High mm -hmm. Life was never it for me. Mm -hmm. So that definitely was the difference um, between all the songs I'd released until Johnny. So what made you finally decide to say that you wanted to give it your all? And you know, I know because I knew you grew up in a very interesting home. You know, your dad was a police commissioner. Yeah. Which means that more likely will be a strict kind of person. Who was strict. Yes. Exactly. Yes. So how were you able to convince your parents that this is what you wanted to do as a career? And I think a lot of people up to date are very surprised that my dad let me do what he yeah. let me go into music, like let his you know last daughter so mm, to say go into mm. music. Um, but people also said maybe he was old age. <laughs> <laughs> he's tired, he's kind of he's like, done. I'm done. Yeah, I'm done, okay, go ahead, as long as you're bringing back home the good grades and yeah. stuff. But I think I think it was just destiny. Mm. And I never really had, um, I never really needed to sit my mom and dad down to tell them, oh, dad, oh, mom, this is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. Because I already had a deal with them, which is make sure that when you are in school, you do the best that you can and you mm -hmm. come home with good grades or else. That or else haunted me, mm -hmm. you know? So, like, as long as I was bringing home the, the good grades, I didn't have to sit down and have that talk. Yeah. yeah. So now there's this evolution into when you release Mama Africa, and that album was really, really beautiful. Mm -hmm. And it was interesting because, in some ways, I feel like we felt like you left us Nigerians. Ah. Like, it was almost like, Yemi, Yemi sings oh, wow. in Swahili. She sings mm -hmm. in French. She's singing in... <laughs> what, <Hey>, what, <laughs> what was it? What was it? What, what, why was it so important to you that you connected more to the whole continent than just Nigeria? I think as I started to travel more on the wings of Johnny, of course, I realized that um, it was just our languages that actually... Mm. Um, distinguished each and every one of us. We are all the same. We pretty much look the same. Mm -hmm. To be sincere, our interests, our likes are almost just about the same. The only difference is our boundaries and our languages. Okay. Our music especially, which is, you know, the, the proof of this exact, uh, of this argument is that the music is the same. We yeah. love the rhythm of the drums and mm -hmm. we, it's, it gives soul, it gives a soul and, and a pattern to our feet movement when we mm. hear the music. So pretty much I realized that with that being said, we are one. So if language is the only difference, mm -hmm. I'm going to write language like it's no man's business. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to talk a little bit about Beyonce and mm -hmm. um, being on the Gift album. Mm -hmm. How did that happen? What was the... Process. What was like, the process like? like when, when, okay, when they said, ah, "Mama, Africa, <laughs> you're going to be on Beyonce's album." Mm -hmm. What was the first thing that like went through your head? You have to give me money first. <laughs> <laughs> you want the juice, Abby? <laughs> give me money. No, tell us. Give us the juice. Bola, le, give, give us me the money. Juice. How did you feel in that moment? I'll catch you next time. <laughs> When I have one of your favorite other artists on your song, you repair. <laughs> How did you feel? Um. Well. 
Whew. Okay, so in the beginning when my management had gotten the email from Parkwood, yeah. I think he disregarded it for almost two months and didn't believe it was true. Really? He didn't believe it was true. He didn't understand why a Parkwood would be emailing about Beyonce because he didn't see the link. He's not crazy about Beyonce like I am. Okay. So I know when I hear Parkwood is my you madame. Know. You know what yeah. I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so he didn't know and he yeah. was disregarding it. And at that point we were traveling a lot. We had a lot of gigs, both in Africa and outside. As always. As always. And then eventually he had the conversation and I'm like, that's his auntie, what's going on? Wow. You know, and then he hits them up and they were already almost two weeks to the end of the project. No. And still I way. couldn't Yes. And still I couldn't exactly make it. But then I had a gig in Las Vegas and then so I just connected to Los Angeles from okay. there. Okay, okay. I eventually got to the office. Um I went to, we went to see the manager, Sataya Liu and I went to see the manager. But I landed in Los Angeles without a talking voice. I couldn't talk, I couldn't sing, and I booked my flights and my accommodation to be there for only three days. Mm -hmm. And I had no talking voice or singing voice. Basically, I was just useless, you know? So that yeah. long trip yeah. was for Noreen. Uh, so what kind of prayer and fasting were you doing in that moment? <laughs> I was just weak. <laughs> what explanation do I want to give myself? That DB that I pretty much, yeah. you know, um, watched and loved the music while being a kid up until mm -hmm, now, mm -hmm. I get the opportunity to get to get thus far and I have no voice. I'm not going to show that I can hit keys and stuff. You exactly. know what I mean? But then that was that was a situation I found myself in. But luckily, I've, I've been in that situation before, okay. just not under the same circumstances. Um, Satire took me to the pharmacist. I got a lot of um, vitamin shots and, um, you know, I have certain um, throat teas mm, that I mm, use and stuff. Mm. So I just pretty much went into that um, hibernation mood where I, I did little or nothing and just right. kept nourishing my body. Right. Um, I think it was the stress of the trip yeah, that had got course. into me. Yeah. So eventually, on the last day, I had a somewhat kind of talking, singing-ish voice. I yeah. couldn't really hit keys. So I get into the studio and I did what I did, tired jet lag. You know now, when you're yeah. in Los Angeles, the hours, when people are sleeping here, mm -hmm, you're awake mm -hmm, there. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'll be on my feet, it's moving as if no, they're blowing you wind. <laughs> You know, and then I, I somehow we're able to do this. And to be sincere, when I was living there, I told myself and I told my manager, I said, looking around me and everything that I've seen, I, I feel like even if, because at the point where I got in there, they'd already picked 150 songs from so many other songs that they had already gotten. There were 150 options? Yes, 150 options. Wow. And I hadn't even jumped on it yet. So I just told myself that, you know, I'm going to give all I, like, that I can. And even if I do not make the project, I, I would just go home knowing that I did my best. Because okay. um, looking around me, the most um, captivating, you know, the most, um, what's the word now, inspiring thing for me was that when I walked in there, mm. there were several boards laid out in all seven studios mm. in this office. And they all had African interest in there. Right there on the artist board, both international and African, both, um, you know, American and African. Mm -hmm. Somewhere in the middle, I had my big face there with the Black Magic album cover, which had the face marks wow. and stuff. I just felt... So even, basically, she'd been listening to you. You know, and not just listening, but probably even watching, you know, yeah, and yeah, not just yeah. me, but watching a Although, lot of us. Yeah. So we, I just felt like I was doing something even you know, yeah. way greater than I thought it was. It, it felt like someone had um, hacked into my pain interest and mm -hmm. just pasted mm -hmm. all the pictures mm -hmm. I had up there. I was like, oh, but, yeah. oh, but, yeah. oh, you know? And I felt really excited to know that someone else is as proud of Africa as I am. Yeah, and when, when did you um, finally first meet Beyonce? Was it at the Lion King premiere? Yes, it was at the premiere in London. What was that experience like? Oh, it was... Look, I have it clearly in my vision. Like, it's still there in my memory. Yeah. I can, like, I close my eyes and open, I can see her there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just joking. But it was surreal because it was a personal request of hers. Mm -hmm. She wasn't supposed to have that meet and greet, but she had personally requested that um, within the period that she's done with um, the royalties, that's the um, the Duke of Sussex yeah, and all yeah, of them, yeah. once she's done with the couple, the royal couple, she would be going to the theater. Mm. So we were at the theater already. And she had requested that after she was done with the royalties, she was going to do see the five African artists mm -hmm. that she was. And Mr. Tayali was one of them, but he stepped aside to do the videos and mm. and pictures, which is super, you know. He's he's humble. awesome. He's he really is. awesome. So eventually, um, I see Auntie B, and she's super excited. You would you would not believe the excitement that she had. Yeah. She was so excited, I did not know how to be as excited because yeah. like. 
yeah. Auntie Nami is supposed to do this <laughs> way. That, you know but, when she was taking pictures of the paparazzi yeah. and stuff, and then she and then when they they stop for a second for the, her stylist to straighten her hair mm. and put her back into place because maybe she's moving mm. and stuff, she just looked inside and I'm like. <sighs> So in, I'm like, is, is that like a full circle moment for you where you're like, all the grind, all the hard work I've been putting, you know, I'm finally on an album, an internet, not only a Beyonce album, yeah. a Lion King soundtrack. Mm. And this is a movie that we all grew up watching. Yeah. What, what does that mean for you, like, with all the sacrifices that you've made as an artist? I, I would just say that it's, um, it's definitely preparation meets opportunity. Mm. It's not, it's not, um... How I put it now, it's just it's it's just justice served for putting in so much time, and dedicated and dedicating so much, you know, of myself mm -hmm. to the project. It, it just it just warms up a spot in my heart mm -hmm. pretty much. Mm -hmm. um, I'm more encouraged ever ever than before, and it's not something that I haven't prayed for or envisioned yeah, before. Yeah. So. I'm just happy to be in the moment, to be healthy and yeah. to be there, you know, because mm -hmm. I wasn't supposed to be in London and then I was in London. Yeah. You know? so, so everything just is working at the same time. Yeah. And it's interesting because I know there's a lot of power in collaborations and your new album has Angela Kijo on yeah. it, who I'm a huge fan of. I mean, what was that like working with her? Working with her? Oh, my days. She's something else. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Look, to be sincere, this track has been like three years in the making. Yeah. Um, I got introduced to her through her brother, who's late now. He's okay. so rest in peace. He actually taught her music in totality. Yeah, and so we would we would converse via email, and eventually we started conversing. That's myself and Angelique. Yeah. And then we met in several countries, in yeah. Paris, yeah. in London. And I just became like a little baby. Yeah. She would give me little secrets on what to do with my vocal cords and stuff. Mm -hmm. And... One day she hit me up and was like, Yemi, I want you to remix my song, Wombo Lombo. Mm. And I'm like, me? <laughs> me? She's like, yes, you. Do what you do with your people in your generation. Yeah. Just do anything you want to do. I'm like, okay, mama. And then I, I saw, not like I was auditioning, but that's what I was doing. I was yeah. auditioning producers. I was sampling their ideas. It. it took me almost another one year, six months to do that. Eventually, I found the right song. Mm. I found the right um, melody. Yeah. And it's super perfect. And okay. we shot the video already. Yeah. It's epic. What's the energy behind the album? I mean, I've listened to it. I like the fact that there's a few R&B songs, you know. Mm -hmm. But when you were putting this album together, what did you want people to feel when they listened to it? Huh. When I was putting this album together, I for me, my albums are always a representation of where I am at that point in time. Mm -hmm. And where I am with music, I'm, I, th I feel like I'm falling in love with old sounds mm. and still awakening to new sounds. Mm. And that's what I put right there in the album. Um, there's a piece of everything and certainly a piece for almost everybody mm, right there. Mm. I took home no prisoners. Mm. That's what I did with the album. Mm -hmm. yeah. And do you feel like in many ways... The name Woman of Steel. Why did you decide to name the album Woman of Steel? Why? For many reasons. Um, I just felt like I needed to celebrate um, the superhero that I had created for myself. And okay. that's myself. Yeah. You know, I, uh, I realized that there are days where we individually must be our own cheerleaders. Mm -hmm. And we individually must be our own heroes. Mm -hmm. I'd looked around. I'd, I'd grown up um, as a kid. There are so many superheroes, mm -hmm. Superman, Superwoman, mm. Spider-Man. Mm. And we, I had several that I looked up to mm. as a kid. Mm. And now I, I found myself in a position where I needed yet another one. But I wanted it to be me. Yeah. And so I became her. Mm -hmm. I became Woman of Steel. Mm. And on those days when I don't want to get up, I don't want to do certain things, I know that Woman of Steel will be there to save me. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you feel like, you know, I was reading an interview recently, a rapper called Cash Doll, yeah. and she was talking about how, specifically within the American space, within female rappers, mm -hmm. the fans are always pitching the rappers, female rappers against each other, whereas the male rappers, right, everyone is guy, guy, guy. Yeah. So it's Cardi B versus, you know, Nicki Minaj, Cash Doll, um, Sweetie. How much do you think the fans play into the Nigerian music scene when it comes to female musicians and the dynamics you guys have between each other? I think we can... I think anybody can do whatever they want to do yeah. with their time, with their data, mm. with their brains, mm. you know, and with their opinions to keep it wherever they want to, mm -hmm. you know. But um, I think it's our responsibility as females to um, show them what 
they should focus on. Mm. You know, like um, how I put it now, there is so much talk out there and people are ignoring our hard work. Okay. People are ignoring the things that our, um, what's the word, all our achievements and dwelling on the pettiness. Mm. No one gets anywhere with pettiness. What you're doing is dwindling the light that we're trying to shine. We are, in, we are an endangered species in this Africa, yeah. in this world. Yeah. It's tougher for us. It's always been like that. It's a man's world. Mm -hmm. And the more we accept it, the more we know that we need to help each other. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think most of the females are even in the forefront of this thing where they put other females against each other, whether on social media and physical. I think it's time. You see how strong their voices are. Yeah. So why don't you just use those voices yeah. to pioneer your females, to cheer on and, and to respectfully understand that you might like A and I might like B so and the world is still beautiful. So that's beautiful. it, right? Because like when you think about it, one of the biggest pittings that they always put you is between you and Tiwa. Yeah. And it's always, you, Tiwa did this, Yemi did this. Yeah. Tiwa did this, Yemi. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that there's so much rumors and speculations that you guys have issues? Like going back to last year where there was the whole bum bum hurrah and then people were now saying that you said this, she said that. During that process, what was going through your mind? Like how, and you know, just clarify exactly what was happening. Like wh what does a girl do when um, her neighbors want to cook up rumors? Yeah. Do you go there and confront them? Mm. Or do you just let them do what they want to do and continue living your life? Because you're going to still lose if you go and confront them. There's just one of you mm -hmm. and so many of them. Mm. And so I don't even think about it because that's not why I became a musician. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's not going to guarantee the next move in my life. Mm. What, did you, what made you decide to apologize about the, the first message that you put out there? I don't know. I can't even remember. I can't remember the emotion and how I felt at that point in time. I just, I just probably wanted peace to reign. Like maybe I was just... I just was confused. I know I was very confused. Yeah, yeah. You know, but it's it's something that happened and it's over and done. I don't understand. We never had a physical conversation. Yeah. It's just people speculating. Ah, I just said, okay, sorry, you. Yeah. Anybody that's upset, please, I'm sorry, you, because I don't know what's going on. How would you describe your relationship with T.Y. right now? <sighs> I don't know. Why well, do you, have, do you have a relationship with her? What kind of relationship? I have a relationship with her. What kind of relationship? Like, I'm can you call that we her have? or message or like? Of hey, course, babe. no. Okay. Of course. Yeah. Phone call. Of course. Why yeah. not? Yeah. yeah. Would you? Would you? Would you be open to doing like collaborations with someone like that? With her in particular. Yeah. Would you be open to it? I feel like you want to have an interview no, with I'm me and her. No, I'm asking you. I'm asking you. Like because the reason why I say it's because you guys are both so powerful. Mm -hmm. Like you're both so powerful. So I'm curious. Would you be open to doing a collaboration with her? <sighs> I don't know how to answer this question. Okay, all right, all right. You'll think about it, you'll think about it. I, I don't have to think about it because all my life when I've been choosing collaborations, yeah. it isn't based on how I feel or um, trying to un unwrite or undo people's thoughts in their head. Mm -hmm. It's unfortunate that with, uh, with the feelings and with the trouble that people keep staring in our way, yeah. they probably will never allow us to ever have a collaboration because the outcome you're not sure if the outcome will even be positive or if it will be overrun or overshun by all the negatives and all the fights. You don't even know. When we do music, we do music so people can be happy. Sure. So now when you do a song together, what are we fueling? What are we hmm. encouraging? That's the most important question. When I do collaborations, it's, there's an aim. There's, yeah. you know. Yeah. So yeah. I think what would be, would be. Yeah, I totally see what you're yeah. saying. Thank you for being honest about that, Yemi. I think... You, our, our viewers and people watching are going to be very, very pleased to, you know, see exactly where you're standing on that. I want to talk a little bit about this thing that nobody's ever seen with you with a boo or a man. Mm -hmm. It was floating. I'm not floating. Are you I'm standing on my own two feet. <laughs> are you, are you, um, do you think about marriage? Do you want to get married? Think about marriage. Yeah. Do I want to get married? I want to get a Grammy. I want to get an Oscar. Mm. Mm -hmm. And is your family, personal life, is that something that you're interested in? Like, is it something that you find yourself hoping to happen sooner than later. Being a mother and all that. Yeah. Oh, I fancy the idea. Yeah. But how hard would it be with your work schedule? I don't know what, look, to be sincere, when I was, when I decided to be an artist eventually, I didn't know how hard it was going to be. Yeah. Because I'd never been that in my life. 
And so I feel the same thing for everything that comes mm. my way. So when, every, when anything comes, because I am who I am, I'll be fine. Yeah. I want to talk a bit about international collaborations. Mm -hmm. Who are you looking forward to collaborating with on maybe your next possible album? Um, like, who are you listening to right now? I love Bruno Mars. So yeah. Let's see how that goes. Um, I definitely love Nicki Minaj. Yeah. Um, so far, I'm thankful that I'm able to work with Rick Ross, with mm. Rick Ross and with um, Beyonce. I'm still looking forward. There, there are some features on my album that I haven't, you know, told the world okay. yet of because that's the deluxe version. So oh, I guess so you guys should watch out coming. for that. Okay, yeah. okay. Okay, Yemi, yeah, because we want to hear your voice and we love your beautiful singing voice. I have a game <laughs> that I want to play. So I'll say the lyric. You don't want to hear me sing. Okay. And you will just have to complete it, right? Mm. So the first one is, there's a fire starting in my heart. There's a fire starting in my heart. <laughs> you are so fire. Okay, okay, okay. Um, what you want, baby, I. What you want, Ooh. baby, I got you. Ooh. What you need. Ooh. I want you to keep doing. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is the RSPCT part. Hey. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Him no no waiting I do. We make a mad over me. Him no no waiting I do. We make a mad over me. I ain't never do you gonna. Hey. Of course, that's my <laughs> You song. know what? So I know. We were like, if we put this in here and she doesn't get it, hilarious. Uh, okay. <laughs> Yummy, thank you so much for coming on The Juice. My pleasure. If your life was a hashtag, what would it be? If my life mm -hmm. was a hashtag, what would it be? Wow, so many hashtags are just flying up in my head. I'm, I'm thinking. Um, ah, geez, this is tough. What's your hashtag? No, you what's what's yours? Yours? Yes, no. Yes. Tell me, what's um, yours? I don't know. This ah. is just <laughs> it's, okay, okay, it's okay. So many okay, okay. Give us, okay, give us a sentence hashtag then. Oh. Give us a sentence hashtag. No, we're sticking to one word. Okay, what's one word. What's my hashtag? This is so. This, she would do this. Every time I interview Yummy, she interviews me. It's so it's annoying. It's just one question. Okay, um, it would be. Bolani. Ta. <laughs> what's Bolani? Or like Grace or something like that. I don't know. If yours was the hashtag, what would it be? <laughs> to be sincere? Yeah. It'll be going. I'm always going in. Mm. Yeah, so mm. go. Like, even though that's not one word. I'm always going in, so go in. Mm. I'm a bit too much. <laughs> no, but that's the reason why you are where you are, right? Yeah, you I know. You put your whole back into it. I know. I'm so proud. Congratulations on Thank everything. You. I can't imagine Thank what you. is going to happen in the future. Thank you, Yemi, for coming Thank you on so much. The Juice. Thank you. Thank you so much for this conversation. This has been our interview with Yemi Alade, Woman of Steel. Make sure that you get her album, which is out now on all streaming platforms. Let me know who you want to see on the next episode of The Juice. My name is Balale. I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.